Hey. Hello, welcome. You are here because you don't know about solenoids and solenoid plugs. Well, I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about solenoid and solenoid plugs. Like this and this type of plug. It's going to be an interesting ride. Go and grab some popcorn and stand by because I'm about to blow your mind with solenoids. Fucking boring. <laughs> This is a solenoid. It's just a valve or an actuator. It's best to call it an actuator, yeah? This is the most common type you'll see. It's some sort of valve thing. But the actual solenoid is this bit on the top, which is nothing but a coil of copper wire. And if you lift it off, like this, by pulling that off there, that'll come off. Now, you've got this valve and you've got the solenoid coil. Now, what you'll see is this is capable of... There'll be an arrow on it, look. It flows that way. You put liquid. This one's liquid, but you can get it for air and everything, oils and all that. They have to be done specifically for what they are. You put it in there, and it won't go through until you energise this. Then it will operate a shaft in here, which will let the liquid come through. The secret to these is they are sealed. This is sealed up. You can take that off there, and the liquid will not come out. Why would you want to do that? Let me explain. This is actually a dash pot, but you can see we've got a coil here, and that coil works on this ferrous shaft here. And you can see there, there's a piston lock. Now, if you imagine, there's the piston doing its business inside the pot lock. So it'd be like that. But imagine that that's sealed, yeah? Well, it's sealed up, but there's a gap around here, isn't there, effectively? And you want to actuate this. Well, this will do that. If you put power into this coil, even though it's not designed for that, it will pull it up or push it down, one or the other. But you'd have leakages around here. So what can we do to overcome the leakage you're going to get? Especially if you're working on a high-pressure system. Well, it's simple. You put a dome on it. So let's get a dome. I'll find a dome. You place a dome on it like this. And then, because this would be sealed... It's totally sealed. Great. No problem. You can put high pressure in here and the liquid can't get out. It can't get out, but you can't actuate anymore. So what you do is you make your coil bigger so that it goes over the top of this and then it actuates your coil for a non-ferrous thing. So it will move that shaft without the pressure leak inside. Another way to explain it is how to do it on ships. If this was a ship's propeller and there's a propeller on here and this was a shaft, this shaft needs to turn to spin the propeller well, there's no way of transferring that movement. So they have what they call a stuffing box. It's just packed with rope and grease. So the old rope and grease here, that's how ships stop the water getting in. Bob's, if you're using high pressure oil and you want to move it up to let the oil through, it just piss out there. So you have a totally sealed unit, which is called a solenoid valve. And you miniaturize all this bollocks down. All this bollocks down gets miniaturized into this. So all you've got to do inside there, there's a magnetically or ferrous pin. You need to move it up to let the liquid through and push it down to stop the liquid coming out. And that is what a solenoid valve is. So they're getting for gas, water, air, all different. But yeah, you're always actuating something that's in a sealed environment. That's the crack. That's all you've got to remember. It might not look like this. It might be massive, but you're actuating something in here which moves something. It could also actuate this to move air that could then move a bigger valve. So there's loads of different funds. But don't worry yourself about this. All you've got to remember is actuate this, move that. So let's look at the bit that's the magic. Let's look at this coil. So the coil is nothing but a wound copper spool that will lift the magnet up. What's interesting is on here is the pin arrangement. Now, this pin arrangement is originally done for solenoids and it fits to a plug like this. Yeah, this is the standard one, which I see most of the time, but you may come across ones that look like this as well. Yeah, that's sort of a non-standard one. This is what they use when they're trying to save money and stuff. But there's two of them. I'm going to work with this one because so we've got better adapters for this. And you'll see there are four pins available. Although this plug's only got three fitted, you've got... These are normally the power pins, live and neutral if you're doing something. This will normally be an earth and you can have another pin there because this plug has been reused for switching. So you can imagine they have live, in, earth, maybe a neutral, then a live out so you could do signals and stuff. But don't worry about it. As a solenoid, it has one pin there and one pin there. And this plug clicks on it like this, like that, screws down, and that goes on top of your valve, 
like that. Not that way, because there's no, it's not a through one, the holes only on the bottom. That goes on there, put power in, makes magnetics, effectively lifts that shaft up. In fact, you can hear it as I do it. Can you hear it? You can hear the movement of the magnet. Of course, I've got this powered up and it does that. So let's listen to it working. I'll put that on there. There is a valve in there. I'll turn the power supply on. So I'll just turn the power supply on. If you listen carefully, So what's happening is it's spring closed and this is opening it. And when you take the power off, it closes again. And I'll do it sideways for you. And what you'll notice is there are zero exposed parts. All the parts are in here. Little tip first is, you'll see I've disconnected it. Never leave this energized because it will burn it out. But you can briefly energize it to test it. If you want to test one of these, you can get something metal like this lovely electric intellect screwdriver. Put it in there, you'll see it moves around quite a lot. Energize it up, and I can feel, can you see that? There's a resistance in there, I can feel that that's working, but never energize a coil without something in there to act on the magnetic field, or this will get really hot and melt. One of the big problems with this type of plug is testing it, because this thing, you have to pull this out of here, and then you have to drag this out of here, and then you can just about get to the pins lock, as you can see, which is an absolute pain in the arse. Or you can leave the top off and leave it all exposed. But if it's main voltage, you're going to really hurt yourself. These can be a pain in the arse to test, because when you remove it from the solenoid, I'm not sure if this was thought about in the design stage, but when you remove it, when it's on the solenoid, when it's on the solenoid, there's nowhere to test. Removing it enough to get a probe in will normally disconnect it. So, amazingly, someone's thought about this, and you can get one of these. This is a solenoid test device. Yeah, you can take your solenoid off, put this device on, which also works for sensors and probes. You then place this in the middle of a sandwich, like that, and you can test the voltage here, and the current, by removing this jumper, you can measure the current in there with a the multimeter. So yeah, if you're gonna be working on a lot of solenoids, it's well worth getting one of these, believe it or not. They're fucking 70 quid. You get absolutely shafted. But yeah, that's a great device. Also, what I'm working on the bench with here is, you'll see that this is a test lead. So I've got a test lead for that solenoid, and I've got a test lead for that solenoid, because I come across them all the time in my game. So yeah, getting one of these if you're working on solenoids is really good. You can also make a test lead. You can make one of these by cutting this open and having some waggos on it. But I said that it looks more professional than the job I'm doing. And that is really all there is to know about solenoids. It's not doing a lot. It's just doing this. It's enclosed. And you want this to go up and down. So they put a ferrous bit of metal here. Apply a current around it. And it will move it. That's all it's doing. And what's in here. In here. Oh yeah. In here. Is completely separate from outside. So if you're using high pressure oils and high pressure gases. You can switch it. One, with no sparks, it's flame safe, or they can be flame safe. And two, without any massive moving parts or stuffing boxes or seals or anything like that. And that is what I know about solenoids. And if you know about these type of plugs, how that works and that these are available, you pretty much know what I know, apart from one thing I'm going to show you now. Solenoids, to test them to see if they're any good. First of all, I showed you the screwdriver method, energising it in, you'll see it moving around. If that doesn't work and you suspect it, all you've got to do is get your tester, turn it on to ohms. Probably want a multimeter over this one, but I'll use this one because it's perfectly okay. That's got 72 ohms in it. That's normally a healthy thing. If it's burnt out, it'll read really, really low. And that is it. I'm not going to tell you all the numbers. If you want to learn how to test a solenoid, test a solenoid, play with it, get it out and touch it and stuff. That's what I'll do. But yeah, if you want to know anything else about solenoids more, or if you think I've not covered anything here, let me know in the comments and I'll re-record this highly quality video and do it again. I'm not just a pair of hands, look. I'm a real human being. See you later. Thanks for watching. Just because you've got a face like my fucking beanbag, mate. <laughs>